Hey, how's it going, FTD fam? We're gonna be looking at a video of Lindsay Lohan, an interview that's done sometime in the past, and not exactly certain how long ago, but she's talking about her experience in finding out about Islam. First of all, thank you very much for accepting our interview request because I know that you are very short with time. Um, Hollywood is a sparkling world, and actually you were uh, almost born into that world. But now you are uh, getting involved with the real world and with the most harsh side of it, actually. So how did transition uh, happen for you? And you lived everything in front of cameras. We know that you have been through really, really hard times. So can we say that you found a way of healing yourself by healing others? Hmm. For the first part, okay. um, I wasn't born into that life. I was born into a very tumultuous a relationship with my parents by on my own accord by my own choice my parents kept me in school but um, I I started working in charity when I was very young my father when I was young and my mother always had me work with um, this uh, foundation called dreams foundation and save the children and I would go and, and they said the as long if you're gonna go to this movie then you're gonna go to a hospital because if the children have seen your movie you're gonna go and get back my grandfather started St. Vincent de Paul in America and was in World War II He's an Irish man, he's, God rest his soul, he's passed. But my whole family's been in charity my whole life. Awesome. So this has been a common thread throughout my life and my bloodstream. So nothing new um, for her and I giving think, back to charity. Uh, you know, when you're living in LA and this is your life and your story and I'm from New York and people forget that, you go back home, you change your life. I became very um, involved with, you know, meditation, Deepak Chopra, uh, transcendental meditation. This became a very big ritual of my life. So I took the time to kind of take out and weed out the bad and only keep the good. Um, then I moved to London because New York was too fast for me. <laughs> because I slowed down and it kept going and I couldn't keep up and I wasn't meant to. Moving to London was the best thing I've done for myself. Wow. And I think as you grow up, you know, life changes and you experience new things. In London, I was able to take myself outside of whatever my family was doing and the people that I had in my life that maybe weren't the best people for me. Or maybe it was my fault, I can't say that, because it's in the past. But in London, I was able to sit alone and say, what is it that I want in life? Okay, I love working with kids. I love giving back to people, and whether I do a movie or not, I want it to be a true story about someone's life that has occurred so people can actually see real things. Because I've done all these Disney movies and these are not real things. As much as I love it and I appreciate it, and I would love to play The Little Mermaid one day, <laughs> I want to talk about real things right now. I'm 30 years old and, and life is only going to keep going and I want it to go in the right way and I want to be able to control my life as I live it day by day. Okay. So that's kind of how this all came to happen. Uh, I came here for a work obligation for an appearance to meet someone and I said, you know what, I feel like I, I should stay. And, and it happened. And I stayed and my friend contact, uh, contacted Abdurrahim and he contacted uh, two other friends of mine who worked for Bosphorus Foundation and we all got together and it just happened. And this is the will of, you know, our higher being. Um, and everything happens for a reason. I left, I came back, my finger got hurt, I couldn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stay. <laughs> so maybe it had a reason that you didn't know. But, but that happening to me was like a, an eye-opening experience because it said, everybody said, well, should, we, should we stop? We'll postpone everything. And my first thought was, are you kidding me? Why would I stop? Why would you stop? Because my fingers hurt when someone had their legs blown off. No, this is, this is exactly what people do and that's exactly not who I am. So let's figure it out. I'll ask friends if I can stay at their place. I will stay here. It was very, you know, direct conversations, um, friends helping friends and other people, pretty much. That's awesome. Very and, strong and, and determined woman. I can to see remain that, that way. Her. This is a very unexpected experience, and hopefully um, it will awaken others to kind of try and do something. I know a lot of people are scared because of what we see, and seeing is believing. But if believing is seeing, then how, how do you know it's even true, you know, um, until you experience it? And how did the first refugee crisis took your attention? Was there a moment, or was it a picture, was it a story, or was it some face that you have seen? A lot of it was around when the coup happened. Mm -hmm. Just seeing the whole country stand up for mm -hmm. each other. That was really emotional for me. Um, that all these people in one place that people are so afraid of are all supporting one another. And that's a really powerful, strong um, front, I think. And um, 
Erdogan did very well, you know, and his people really admiring and respecting him as, you know, the first elected president. This is a big deal. And that's, that goes to show something. Um, and in London, I don't watch social media. I don't, you know, in London, we have like news and Bloomberg all day. So this is what's on my TV. I don't have like uh, Access Hollywood and all these other shows and I don't see this anymore. For four years now, I don't see this <laughs> and I love it. So it's when people notice, like uh, see on the street anywhere, they in London, they just keep walking. Uh, it's old news. I love it. This is great for me. Here, when I went to a restaurant, there's a million paparazzi. I'm like, I can't breathe. I panic because I'm not used to that anymore. Right. And that's the past, you know. Um, and, and I don't want, it's very easy for me to go to a refugee camp and say, oh, she's getting paid, she's doing it for this, she just wants attention. No, that is absolutely not the truth. That is why we went and then we did it and then we told everybody. Everything that I've done here, we do it first and then we talk about it. Because I can't speak on something I haven't lived through or experienced. It's not my place. Wow. Um, and that's, that's what we will continue to do with helping these people. And hopefully others will try and do it, not for the wrong reasons, but for the right ones. And your picture with headscarf, it's all around these days, people are talking about it. And with the headscarf, here we go. It was the same thing with your picture carrying Quran, actually. <laughs> In America, I was going through a lot um, with past things that had happened to me over a 10-year span. And my very close friends who have been there for me a lot in London are Saudi and they gave me Quran and I brought it to New York because I was learning and I was and it was it opened doors for me to experience and uh, spiritually to find another you know true meaning and this is who I am but this is just me holding it with me walking going whereas the paparazzi maybe across the street I didn't know and they crucified me for it in America wow. yeah. they made me seem like Satan mm -hmm. I was a bad person for holding that Quran. And that, and I, I was so happy to leave and go back to London after that because I felt so unsafe in my own country after this. Wow. I mean, people were like horrible to me. And just because this is my belief, if, I want, if this is something I want, to, I want to learn, this is my personal, my own will. Right. This is not for you to express. If you want to say it, keep it to yourself. I'm not looking at what you do every day. Maybe you're not doing enough because you're bored hurting me. <laughs> but I can't imagine how many people go through wow. this all the time. Shots fired. And that made me feel like back. an outsider. So I understand why, uh, you know, the Turkish people are upset because they live in a great, beautiful place. And I understand why women that wear headscarves are, are looked at differently because I felt like that. Wow. So when the woman, when I was in Antep, she put that headscarf on me, I felt really honored because of that. Because she went out of her own way to allow me to be part of her culture. And she didn't have to do that. You know, I was a stranger to her. And I merely said I really liked the color of her headscarf and she gave it to me. Uh, uh, uh. And maybe she only has two. And she gave me one. There's more to that story that occurs. And I said, you know what? Because this woman took the time to give me this and, and a part of herself, not even knowing me, I'm not taking it off. And, and my first thought, and I, and I said to my good friend Hillel, I said, but it scares me because people are going to look at the headscarf and only talk about that. Right. They They're not going to ask the real questions about why. Because that's not interesting. It will become headlines suddenly, right? You know, and it should. It should. Mm -hmm. It should be headlines. It's okay, because in Turkey you have a free will as a woman if you want to or you don't want to. That's why it's amazing here. You can choose what you want and it's accepted. Whereas I'm in America holding a Quran and I'm the devil. Right. No, you have to, you have to acknowledge the good parts of, of a, a place where we think is so bad. You know, people think it's so dangerous. It's really like we're sitting in a really nice place and we're very lucky to even be here. So it's about time we start, you know, recognizing the truth and doing something. That's pretty awesome that Lindsay Lohan is so open to helping people as well as learning about different spiritual practices, learning about uh, different cultures that she didn't grow up in. And, you know, just her appreciation for the gift of the headscarf that she got from somebody who she was a stranger to. And experiencing that sort of hospitality, of course, it's, it's a great feeling. And it, it just sucks that she comes back to her home country where she was born and all everybody's talking about is, oh, she's bad, look at her, what she's doing, is she getting radicalized and all of that. And sometimes 
people in America, in American societies, look at other countries and say, oh, yeah, they're, they're bad, look, they're, they're terrible and whatnot. But there's a lot of terrible things going on in American societies as well, too. And yes, of course, everybody is gonna have their pride when it comes to their country. My country is the greatest and this and that. But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because another country operates differently women are dressed differently. There may be a different religion that is propagated in their society. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's bad or doesn't mean it's less of a, of a society. And I think that's what Lindsay Lohan is working a lot to do, to have people see different sides of other countries, as well as to get in touch with humanity of people you know, understanding where people are coming from, their stories. As she said, that woman may have had only two headscarves and she gave up one. That's a lot to give up. Some people may think, oh, it's just a headscarf, but you don't even know if she could really afford many different headscarves. So for her to give that up herself, that's a big thing. And yeah, people don't necessarily talk about that. They don't talk about the hospitality that people from different countries, like Turkey, for example, they show every single day. They just want to talk about, oh, the bad, and the, the, you know, the, the, the violence and the crime and everything, you know, but there's so much more. So yeah, really appreciate Lindsay Lohan for doing the work that she does now. And also what I really appreciate is that she didn't trash Hollywood or say, you know, they're doing this and that because she made her money through Hollywood. She didn't trash it, you know, it's good. It can entertain people, you know, you can promote stories that are impactful, whatnot. There's so many different great things about Hollywood and American society as well too. So she didn't trash it. She's just looking at, well, this is what they, propagate a lot of times and now I can feel like how other Muslim women felt when they're targeted and when they're called evil just for wearing a headscarf so she can relate to that. So yeah, um, I, I, I see that she's very smart, she's a very smart woman and also very determined and at the same time she uh, respects a lot of where she came from and how she got to the levels of success that she did. So yeah, those are just my two cents on this, some of my thoughts. I'm curious to know what you think about this. Sound off below in the comment section and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.